Hey, what's up guys? Keith Thunderwood here, creator, writer, and producer of Kalifi and the Timeless Centuries. And we have today a very special guest. This young man is so talented and I'm so proud to be working with him. He is our key animator, Mr. Sean Hawkins. What's up, Sean? Hey, I'm good. How are you, Keith? How are you I'm doing? I'm doing really, really good. It's, it's just so crazy because, you know, this is like the first time that we've actually seen each other in real time. Yep. It's crazy. We've been, we've been having uh, communications back and forth for, man, three years, four, that's, maybe? That's about right. Three years. That's about right. Yeah, yeah since, wow. since you first started working on the project, it is just, it's just crazy. I mean, in this, um, I, it's probably even amazing for you um, in this new era of communication where, you know, you can work with somebody for years and never actually see them in person. Yeah, there's, um, I, that's pretty much my whole career right there. Like I've worked with a few others um, that I've never met. <laughs> So it's just like it's kind of nice uh, for me because I'm I'm kind of uh, I don't want to say shy, but um, introvert. Am, yeah, very much. Yeah. So um, it helps to kind of have a distance, but then at the same time, it hurts the project because when you're with somebody, you can get things done faster. So, right. Right. Yeah. That's true, and it's and it's so funny because um, I I often tell people when they're like, well, how are you dealing with the lockdown? I was like, um, I've always worked from home. <laughs> it's been my fantasy. Too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So Sean, tell us a little. So let me let me just give them a little bit more background. Uh, Sean is the key animator for Khalifa and the Timeless Century. So all of that, you know, beautiful artwork that you guys see in the motion comic. This is the guy that's responsible for it. So we're going to talk a little bit, you know, today about, you know, Sean's background and, and how we met um, and how he came to work on the project. So, Sean, uh, tell us a little bit about you, where you're from, you know, your educational background, that kind of stuff. Okay, so I'm from Philadelphia, born West Philly. Uh, I was born people, and raised from the playgrounds where I spent <laughs> most of my days. Go ahead. Yeah. I always tell people uh, West Philadelphia born and then moved. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, right. we, um, so I lived in Philly um, most of my life. Everything we do is in Philly. Um, so I'm from Philadelphia. Um, my educational background, um, as far as art, uh, went to the Art Institute for Media Arts and Animation. So of uh, everything I do for you, that's where that can, comes from. Right. Um, then, uh, I don't know if you know this, but in what year was it? Um, 2018, so I have a master's degree. So okay. I need to put that out there. What's your master's um, in? Marketing. <laughs> okay, well, cool. So it's, it's a, a MBA with a concentration in marketing. Um, and I got it. 2018, I believe. Yeah, 2018, because the week that I actually graduated was right before my birthday. So, actually, no, sorry, it was a week after my birthday. So, I turned 25 and I had two months. So, that was just like an amazing feeling. Um, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I live here in uh, Philadelphia with my girlfriend and our dog. Right. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's cool, man. So what what made you get into art? When did you know that that was your calling? Oh, man. Um, I've always been attracted to visual art uh, as a child. Mm -hmm. um, it started... Uh, it, it, I really... I mean, I've been drawing my whole life, so it's hard to really say when I started but when I knew I wanted to make it a career um I was in the fourth grade and I was just it was a Saturday morning um when Saturday morning cartoons was a thing um just finished watching one of my favorite shows and I just remember what was there, it what was your favorite show oh man it, back then it was Beyblades okay um, 
So I was I was big into that as a kid. Had the whole arena and a couple of little Beyblades and everything. But um, I remember I finished the episode, and I was just sitting back, and I was just like, oh, I want more. And I remember thinking, I was like, I want to make people feel this way with stuff I make. And then my next thought was, I want to do this for the rest of my life. So mm -hmm. I think from fourth grade, from fourth grade on, that, that's that's been the goal. Um, I had a little stint in high school when I thought I wanted to study um, astronomy, but then that was my basis because I don't like physics. <laughs> right, right, right. No, that was like me. I thought that I wanted to be a chemist until I realized there was a bunch of math involved. So <laughs> I, I have no problem with math. It's just physics is different. <laughs> right. And I love physics. I actually love physics. I actually like, you know, the theory behind it. Well, of course, you know, I'm a alternate history guy. So mm -hmm. but I, I, I really do find physics very um, you know, interesting. I mean, it's how it's, I mean, at a basic level, it's how we move. And so <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's the so like my issue with physics was and this is the problem I had in high school because I almost failed that class. Right. Um, was every math problem is so different because you had to factor in so much. Right. I'm so used to just straightforward. Okay, here's the numbers. What's the solution? Okay. Now you're asking me to measure uh, how fast is this ball going to fall if you drop it? <laughs> <laughs> And I should have known oh, because in math class, I hated word problems and physics right. is all word <laughs> problems. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, Sean, who are some of your art influences? Who are some people that you like? Um, and let's let's go across genres. OK, so um, my first. Uh, my first choice would be Glenn Keane. He was mm -hmm. a. Um, he's a, a major animation figure from Disney. Mm -hmm. um, now he's retired. What are some of the projects that he worked on? Oh man, Beauty and the Beast, Little mm -hmm. Mermaid. So he, I remember in a video, um, he had explained that um, he was basically he was these characters because mm -hmm. he was the um, the way it worked in Disney was each character got an animator, so he was right. the animator for that character. So he 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 was Beast, he was Ariel, he was Pocahontas. Um, Aladdin, I think, mm -hmm. Tarzan, and Tarzan's my favorite. I love Tarzan. Right. Um, yeah, I see a lot of Tarzan in uh, Mowgli. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Anytime I draw this, that's, that's where I'm pulling from. In right, school, right. Um, we had to learn how to do figure drawings in that vein, and, you know, in that um, simplistic but descriptive mm -hmm. vein of Disney animation and that was kind of my goal right we had a um we had a figure drawing book that explained the whole thinking behind it and I, that was my bible I stuck to that so right I remember man, I remember it was like I think after the during our second year in college I had I bought the book and I don't think I was supposed to have it yet <laughs> but I bought it and I was reading the first chapter and I'm getting hype and I, I just start drawing. And I remember that night, from that night on, my figure drawings look so different. So Wow. Glenn Keane, he's been an inspiration for like my foundation is drawing characters. Um, another big one later, I think in my earlier 20s was Alphonse Luca. Mm -hmm. um, he was an old um, lithograph artist. I can't tell you what time span. I right. had one of his big questions. But... Um, I just love, um, I love the way he, his, his whole designs work, the figures, you know, the main focal point, but then everything behind him is just so intricate and detailed. Um, and I fell in love with him because I fell in love with the Art Nouveau, Art Nouveau mm -hmm. um, cause I just love all the sweeping curves and all, it's beautiful, all oh, man. Um, that and Art Deco. Um, right. And I have Art Deco. Uh, let's see. I was just thinking about these. There's an uh, artist I look up to now called, uh, his name is Ness Kane. He's this illustrator. He does some work for uh, Overwatch, mm -hmm. um, some illustration work. And his, oh my goodness, his pieces are amazing. The colors, the lighting, oh my goodness, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, 
I had to think more of a good turn. Oh. What's your name? I had to look at the books. Uh, I think it's Roy Licht Lichtenstein. Um, oh, yeah. He. Here it is. Yeah, this guy. Nice. Love oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Love his work. I actually, um, it's a goal of mine one day to create an art style that's um, like a fusion between Roy Lichtenstein and Alphonse Luca. I want to see how I could put those together because I like what Roy Lichtenstein does with just a picture of a lady's face, mm -hmm. but with all the um, all the little dots and everything. So I want to right. see. Right. So that's it. That's like that's, that's in the back of my head all the time. <laughs> it's so funny. It seems like that's how they used to do most comic books back in the day. Yep. Was that was that style? But even just looking at that, um, the picture on the cover of the Lichtenstein book, it reminds me of this painting that you did with the, um, the African woman and she had kind of a, a fro, kind of a Nefertiti fro. It's kind of mm -hmm. reminds me of that a little bit. So I can definitely see those influences, even not if not in the details, but in the style. Yeah, around that time, I, I was, I would have those books on the desk and I was just, um, other uh there's this guy gil elfgren he's a like uh when pin art when illustrated pinup was like very popular um he's like i have an american pinup book mm -hmm. and out of all the artists in there he's my favorite one right um, just the way he paints is just amazing. Um, but there are others that i could go on and on because now they're all <laughs> blood in my brain <laughs> right did you did you ever read comic books growing up Oh yeah, I have um, comic books up there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I think so. The first, uh, my first comic book that I owned was, and I always just have these random ones. I never right. have my complete like set. It's just right. Uh, so of course, my first one was uh, a Detective Batman comic. Mm. That my I think my parents had bought me just a random one, and I was like, "Right, I love it. okay." So, <laughs> um, then another one I owned is uh, it's a cartoon strip, but it's um, I think it's called Mutts, and it's a, it's a it's a pretty funny one. Sometimes I look through that one just to have a laugh. So it's like right. an old newspaper type uh, comic strip. Anything else? Uh, there's a Spider Man comic that I have. That is my favorite because of the cover um, and the artwork in it. It's it's one of those um, it's one of those comic books where the art on the cover is how it looks all the way throughout. Right, so, right, right, right. Beautifully illustrated on the cover, and then when you go into it, the whole thing is a masterpiece. It's right, crazy. Which it's do about, you remember which um, issue it is? I don't remember what issue, but I remember the story. It's right. about so. Venom and Carnage are fighting each other, and it's about the new sim one of the newer symbiotes. I think his name is Toxin. Mm -hmm. He's kind of like he's red on top and then black on the bottom. Right, 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 right. He was a um. It talked about his origin story, how he was a cop and he got caught up in the middle of and somehow got infected with the symbiote. Then he ends up becoming Toxin, and so it's it's is. I remember getting it and just it was blowing my mind when I saw it uh, when I first had it. it it's amazing work. Um, do you read any graphic novels? I used to read a lot of manga. That was the first. Right, right, right. Manga was, man, in elementary school, anime manga, the mm -hmm. first, uh, my first loves. <laughs> you know? Right. Um, apart from video games. Um, of course. But yeah, I've read, um, I read Bleach when that was starting, but then mm -hmm. I fell off because, you know, I can't, I, I, I'm a young kid, I didn't have money to buy him. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Got some random ones. I ended up giving them all away because they're all old and you can just find it online now. So right. no point in hold them on, hold, hold them on to them. Um, but a lot of st a lot of stuff that influenced me more so shows I watched on TV. Um, Bruce Timm's animated uh, Batman series is amazing. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and I can see a lot of that in your colors and shading. I man, yeah. It, I always sometimes I go back and I just look at the. Um, the background art mm -hmm. and just, man just 
you talk about catching the mood perfectly. You know? Yeah. It's the same way like that with uh, Miyazaki's uh, films. Mm -hmm. The background art for those, I wouldn't even try to get as detailed as they do. Man, it's beautiful. Right, and, and, and it's just amazing to me. And like I said, we'll talk more about it when we get into the project, how, how much detail you can put into your backgrounds in a short amount of time, you know? And I never like them. Really, just <laughs> never, never I like them. Never like them. Because backgrounds are one of those things where you have to, I think the best background art is always done by someone who, specializes in it mm -hmm. um like i could i could do you know some basic backgrounds for like storyboarding purposes and just to place the story somewhere right but i would i would always um always wish i had to really just sit down and really design a background because you can tell a lot of story with background so right even with so even with a uh, funny story so even with um the first episode um, when you first see the church, I had my first idea was this grandiose idea. I had a sketch. I remember I sent you a sketch. Too. Oh yeah, I sent you the sketch, and you were like, "You know this is happening outside, right?" And I was like, "Ah, <laughs> oh, I gotta." So I ended up like scalping yeah. and everything, but it I was a ruin. Like, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So I was like, "Oh man," because my whole idea, I wanted because so. When you see that shot, the first shot of the camera coming down the church and everything, I wanted to draw this crazy, like, indoor shot. Because, okay, so there's a church in Philadelphia, the St. Peter's Basilica. Mm -hmm. I've never been in it. But, right. You know, you can go on Google Maps and you can, like, see from, like, the 360 or whatever. Right. Um, so you can see inside it and how it looks. It is beautiful it, it big huge building i imagine you walk in you feel so small right and you statues intricate details on the trims all this stuff and then my favorite part is the uh, checkerboard tile floor black and white mm -hmm. and then you got gold everywhere and oh, it was beautiful and i wanted to i wanted to capture that i wanted to get a shot of like the top like if you were inside of a dome, I wanted right. to start center of the dome and draw this crazy, cause there's like perspective tricks you can do the way when you animate it, it looks like the camera is just like rotating downwards. Right. So there's there's a way to draw that. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna do that. So when you told me it was outside, I was like, dang, I gotta, I gotta figure something out. But I was like, okay, well, uh, stained glass from the outside, the big circular thing, I can still work with that. So oh yeah. Was, that works so though. A, a lot of the project is me coming with some uh, grandiose idea, but having to cut a lot of it. Um, my teachers in school used to say I over design. Like, right. <laughs> and, and of course, I never mind did that at all. You know, it just, it just, oh, made, yeah. it, it just made it more, even though it's motion comic, you know, form, of course, because what, what a lot of you might not know is, is that Sean did everything for the animation. There was not an animation team. He did everything. So there were, you know, we on a low budget. And so, <laughs> and so everything um, had to be, you know, streamlined and made as quick, made to be done as quickly as possible. But Sean was able to deliver some, you know, some really, really good stuff um, in a quick amount of time that was still visually pleasing, you know, in motion comic format. Sean, explain to them, I've, I've explained here and there, you know, on, um, you know, on our social media, what is, what is a motion comic? Motion comic is the way I think about it. And this helped me, um, this helped me go through the project. It, to me, is like, if you took an animatic from mm -hmm. any movie. Well, now you got to explain what an animatic is. <laughs> right. And then I'm going to have to explain uh, storyboarding as well. So let's, let's run through it. So All right. the storyboard uh, in movie development, um, there are three stages. You have, you have uh, I'm going to say pre-development, production, then post-development. Right. Storyboarding is a pre-development uh, thing, which means they're planning out the story on these little panels, you know, just little sketches, and they're going through it, you know, 
Um, the next stage from that would be an animatic, which is like you're putting the images to, you know, together and is creating a video. So, you know, back in the day, Disney would put the put the, uh, the index cards on the clipboard and then they would right. act it out as they're doing it, which I thought was always awesome. Right. Uh, but now they they you know they use something like Photoshop or mm -hmm. um, Toon Boom Harmony to um, you know they do the sketches and it. A lot of times the animatic becomes what they call the uh the keys, which becomes like the main drawings of poses. Right. So when I say um to me a motion comic is like an animatic because animatics are usually just sketches. Mm -hmm. To me it's like an illustrated animatic. Or mm -hmm. yeah, because um not only are they not only are you not really getting like full range movement. Mm -hmm. but you're it's fully line drawn it's fully colored it's clean you know it's nothing is ambiguous you know what everything is right you know? so or the easiest way to explain it is if you look at a comic panel and you move it <laughs> right but you know son what what i found amazing was is that you know you did so much more you know than that I mean, I've seen some um, some motion comics as rudimentary as you know, you show a panel, and then you just zoom down to the next. It's basically a comic book page, and they're just yep. doing close ups of each, you know, of um, of the panels. You know, you literally animated each one of the panels. You know, for the most part. Right. Yeah. Because I wanted to. Um... So, you know, I'm kind of, I'm competitive. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, and I, I tried for years to think that I wasn't, but I am competitive when it comes to art. Um, I had a rival in art school, like that, you know, and that, and that's fun because yes. um, you push each other. That's so, right. Um, more recently, I'm kind of having peace with that because you know, uh, years ago, I was like, oh, I don't need to compete in art. Now, you know, have fun, just make the best. Of but you know, it it's funny because uh, when I whenever I think about meeting other artists or uh, when I meet another artist, if their if their work is in the same line as mine, mm -hmm. uh, I feel like okay, let's see where you're at, let's see where I'm at. Do I have to catch up, or am I already beating you? Like, what's the situation? Right. So um, I brought that energy to Caliphius. So I'm you know he came to me and said, okay, we're making a motion comic. First, I need to see what's going on, uh, and then I can also find out what I can do. So, um, there are some really good motion comics out there. Um, mm -hmm. There's this one I saw. Uh, it was like this, like Egyptian thing. Oh, um, Black Sands. Black yeah. Sands. Yeah. Yeah. Shout yeah. out. Shout out to them. Yeah, most definitely. Yes. And yeah, they were they were like, okay, so when I do this, I need to be like, okay, so right. They they to me were the. I think it was around episode two and three I had discovered them, and I was mm -hmm. like, okay. so now I I see a bar, so now right. let me okay let me let me go for that let me go for that so right. I like I like stuff that they were doing. And yes, I tried to do the best I could um, with what I had, you know, what right. I had and everything. Mm -hmm. So Sean, how did how did you um how did you get in? I say this all the time when I do these cat chats. How did you get involved with the project? So um, man, do I not remember? <laughs> um, <laughs> your your uncle Robert's gonna kill you if you don't remember. <laughs> right, I'm trying to yeah, I'm, like, I'm trying to make I'm trying to make sure I um, I'm trying to because I know Uncle Robert is our connection. But I'm That's to right. Remember like the how. Cause I don't remember if it was just emails. So. Right. Okay. I'm going to tell the story then. Right. <laughs> All right. Okay. You guys, this, this would happen. So one of my good friends for, for life, uh, Robert Tolliver, shout out to him. Sean is his nephew, great nephew, correct? Grand nephew. Yes. Grand nephew. Right, right, right. Great nephew. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they related. <laughs> right. So one of my good friends, Robert Tolliver, he told me that he had this, he knew that, you know, that I was, you know, into comics and animation and, you know, was working around with playing around with a couple of projects. And he said, um, you know, my nephew's an artist. That's what he told me. He said, my nephew's an artist. 
And I said, okay, well, I might be able to use them, you know, for some stuff for some of my other businesses or whatever. And um, he said, okay, cool. So he connected me and Sean. Sean sent me over some beautiful, beautiful, you know, paintings that, that well, they look like paintings that he had, graphic paintings that yes. he had that he had done. And I thought the work was absolutely beautiful. And I was like, well, you know, it's beautiful, but I don't know if it's exactly what I need, right? Okay. So mind you, so then Sean and I communicated every now and then, maybe for about three to six months, you know, yeah. every now and then just kind of communicating. And then I was talking to him about maybe doing some character designs um, for an animation, for an animation project, for a motion comic. And then he says, you know, I went to school for animation, right? <laughs> it's like, ain't nobody told me nothing. You know? <laughs> okay, so uh, shout out to Robert, but he's also to blame for that. <laughs> I, I remember he, we would always talk about, oh yeah, you, uh, you do graphics, right? I'm like, well, I'm a, I'm an animation student, but yeah. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. That's how he wrote me into a lot of his fashion work. Uh, he's like, I, I remember we were talking, we were walking in New York, we were talking. Right. He's like, oh, you should try fashion stuff. And in my head, I was like, well, if I can draw it, I'll probably just figure it out. Right. Uh, but then I became his graphic artist. And <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? right. <laughs> but it was the, it was the funniest thing and I mean you know this whole project you guys I just have to tell you it's been nothing but God I mean just the, all of the mm -hmm. right people have been placed um, you know before me by his blessings and 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 Sean was one of those people because then you know because I am a perfectionist as Sean will tell you uh, um, I said okay well let's let's test it out let's have you do uh, the first scene the opening scene which you guys see and Califia now where she's soaring over Lemuria and she's doing the narration, you know, um, about Lemuria. And so Sean said, okay. And he said, I can be done in about four days, three days, three days. I can be done in about three days. And I said, okay, you know, cool. Well, we'll see what you, what you come back with. And let me tell you something, just to be honest, I've never told Sean this. My expectations were not very high, you know? And I said, we might be able to work with something and kind of, you know, tailor it or whatever. He might be able to do something. And this, I was getting ready to say boy, but this young man, he delivers that, the opening scene that you guys see now is basically the opening scene. And he sends that over and I'm just like, whoa, I was not, I was not expecting, you know, that at all. And, um, and it just, it was just, it just blew me away. And of course, then we started working together on the, the project and, you know, Sean, it's like, sometimes I feel like he's in my head. I mean, we talk a lot. So, I mean, so he gets a good, he gets a good idea of what I want, but he's also, he also has to go by the script and, when I say that based upon his style, that it, it, it looks just like what I would have envisioned, you know, for the motion comic. I mean, just without a doubt. And then one of the things that I told to, said to myself was that his style, because it was so ethereal, um, that it really worked well, you know, for this project where it almost, like I said, it looked like a bunch of mini paintings. You know, it just worked really well with that. And I had never seen a motion comic that had looked like that before. And so that sealed, that sealed the deal. So. Yeah, man. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You know, I appreciate it. You know, I definitely appreciate it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, let's talk a little about the, about the project. So what did you, what did you think when you got the script and you read it? So when I read it, um, so for a long time, I wanted to be a storyboard artist. Califia is is uh, a combination of a lot of things. So oh, yeah. I wanted to do uh, illustration, storyboard, uh, character design. It was like my three top things I always wanted to do. Um, so when you gave me the script and I was reading it, um, I couldn't help but get excited. The, 
this type of story is in a vein of things I would love to do. Action story, a little bit of mystery, mm-hmm. a little bit of um, slice of life things with Dawn and everything. Yeah. Um, you know, there are ups and downs. You know, there's, there's a good pace and a good balance. Um, the action I'm always attracted to because that's that's the first thing for me. It's like, okay, who's hitting who? Who's jumping over? Right. <laughs> you know, what's happening? You know, um, so. Yeah. Califia for me um, is is honestly so if if I get real personal for a second, yes, Califia for me was an answer to a lot of uh, a lot of like the little bit of depression and sadness I've been going through for mm-hmm. years before we got together. Yeah, um, like because how does it feel to get a bachelor's degree in this thing you love, mm. can't find a job for six months? Now you work at Target. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, so, I feel you, man. Definitely. Yeah. So yeah. I remember uh, at one point <laughs> I was at Target and I felt like as soon as I got hired, this lady wanted to fire. Mm-hmm. I remember um, I was working stock and she was just on my back. And I remember I was just like cutting open boxes, trying to stock up, and I just started crying. <laughs> like, right. like, is this my life right now? Mm. You know, if, if, if Sean of 2020 could go back to that Sean and be like, you're about to give it a couple years, mm-hmm. but you're about to get on something that's is gonna start making you feel really good about yourself. You're really gonna mm-hmm. start, you know, all the hours of life drawing is about to come out into something. And mm-hmm. when you're done, it's gonna be like, I did what? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Califia for me, uh, especially right now with episode one through four being actually done right <laughs> absolutely um is you know i can i can look back at it and and be like wow okay and then so funny thing is as soon as like the major illustration was done um well really as soon as like the video and sound and everything mm-hmm. was done and i was able to send it off to you and i didn't know how to do any client stuff so, right right back to studying so right. My photo references start to start doing paintings again. So you know. So ever since then, like I think ever since I sent you the final, and even like between that time and now, like I, my work has improved even. Since. Oh, and, and 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 he was already good, you know. And it, this was this was an experiment, you know, for for both of us, you know. I, of course, I have a film and television background. And I've always been a longtime fan of animation and comics, um, but this is my first time producing anything within within the animation um, realm, and so it was a it was a learning experience for 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 both of us. And then just to to see the way that we both, you know, um, appro- improved over the uh, the process is just absolutely, you know, um, a- amazing. And like I said, so it was just it was meant to be. You know, yeah, man. And I, what's 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 funny is too is is that I can always tell people who have not watched it, you know, that that you know, that act like they've watched it, or mm-hmm. or they've watched bits and pieces, like you know, once we got to episode four, because they're yeah. always saying stuff like, Well, what happened? You know, or you know, where where are they where are they going with this? Or, you know, um, how does how does Don Henry fit into you know, Lemuria, it's, those kind of questions are always funny to me because I'm like, if you watch, if you watch the, the all four episodes, then you know, then you know, you have a good, a, you have a good idea of what is going on. Although we left, just so you guys know, people have asked this, we, we leave the, the ending of the motion comic open because this is um, a proof of concept, a proof of concept. We ultimately want to do it as a, um, fully animated series or open-ended movie. And so that's why it's left open-ended, but it's still a good story, if I say so myself. So. And you know, it's still a good story. And 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 Sean does a, a wonderful job of bringing it to life. Of course, we got to give a shout out to Alejandro Gonzalez, who did the original um, character mm-hmm. design, not for all of the characters, because Sean, you did um, Cyan, mm-hmm. um, and you also did um, Caliban. Yeah. Caliban. Uh, William Tell's arm. Yeah. William Tell's arm and Sharkita, of course. Can't forget Sharkita. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Sharkita. yeah. And and Sharkita. Oh, and Nana and Nana Henry. 
Oh yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. Herndon. <laughs> oh yeah, Mr. Herndon. That's right. That's right. I forget so, my own word. Yeah. So, but um, but definitely want to just you know shout out Alejandro also. But yeah, but. She, this has been this has been a, a wonderful, great experience, and one that I hope that you know Sean and I are able to continue. You know, once you know, once we do uh, get a full deal, um, you know, for Khalifi in the time of centuries. So let's talk a little bit about um, the complete. Okay, so we said before. So so again, you guys like the the four episodes that you guys saw on YouTube, and I'll explain that in a minute. In a minute that you saw on YouTube those were actually the pilot script and we just broke it up into you know four parts um and then now we have the complete motion comic that's all four episodes together and sean what's different what are some of the things that's that are different about without telling you know too many story details but what are right. some of the things that are different about um the complete motion comic as opposed to the four separate episodes so the main thing for me was um there are some panels that were kind of off so mm. i could go back and improve on them so, clean them up a little bit yes yeah mm -hmm. so so there you know when you if anybody wants to you know watch the whole thing and compare it to the original release you'll see some things are different very some, much uh, so characters are, are cleaner <laughs> yes um uh, there are some, so we had to add some, some more animation to connect everything. Mm -hmm. So there are new panels, there are new illustration, um, new animation, new animation as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. new animation as well. Um, and I, well, I am gonna, I am gonna d give one spoiler. There, Sean, he, he, we added this um, scene with Mongor, who is this. Well, he's basically like King Kong, and Godzilla had a baby. And um, he, yeah. he added this scene where Mongor is running across the ground. That's that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's worth a watch just for that. But go ahead. I'm that sorry. Man, that one. Um, that, oh, sorry, so, OK, I'm, um, I'll tell you about uh, my how my head works sometimes. I've had that idea in my head for a long time. Even reading the script, I was like, oh, but I thought about the work behind it. <laughs> right. And of course, I go to do it. And it's like, oh, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, and that, um, that yeah, that whole fight scene uh, between the Griffin Goddess and Mongor is just that's that's yeah. that's like a lot for a motion comic. That's a lot of animation, and that not was, and not complaining. So <laughs> that one, man, that I did. I mean, there's a lot of stuff on this project that I did to myself. <laughs> <laughs> right but the fight scene was one where i was like okay i got a fight scene let me really try to show my chops a little bit um you know, i had grand ideas and i had to slow them down so i got to okay four drawings for the fight that should be good so mm -hmm. it worked out it worked out really really well um tell me what was some of your you know i, I told you that when you look at because there are the the, the show is not just action you guys there is um a lot of character development and a lot of dialogue um as well um and i told sean that you know that he had a way um as, especially in the don henry nana henry scene and the sycorax and caliban scene and then even um one of the scenes between don and sharkita um of capturing um and this is motion comic of capturing um the emotion uh, behind the characters uh, how were you able to do that so um daydreaming is my one of my best skills um yeah, join that, that club yeah that, <laughs> so, but it's also a curse because um sometimes when i'm not supposed to be working I'm just daydreaming about stuff. But, right, right. Um, when I when I'm reading a script, um, you know, when I'm going through it, I'm like, I'm kind of like trying to read and daydream at the same time. I'm, mm -hmm. trying, to, I'm trying to, you know, okay, take the words. What's the story in my head? What are the camera angles? Okay, where am I looking? You know, so I start with that. Um, and you know, it's just kind of, that kind of thing comes from watching a lot of movies, watching a lot of um, a lot of anime, playing 
a lot of video games. I kind of have an instinct for, um, okay, if things are slowed down, it's slowed down, but what's the move? Okay, it's entering. Okay. Mm. So, all right. So, we're in the middle of the day, we're just talking. Okay. So, we're inside. Okay. There's some nice lighting. Nothing's crazy. Um, the colors have to be, you know, bright. Um, and then it's a lot of research. I mean, I told you, but uh, for the apartment, when I started, whose um, apartment? I, for uh, uh, Nana Henry's apartment. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. For hers, I uh, of course you gotta do research for everything. So, but um, I researched um, dang, um not blueprints, but um, apartment uh, designs, mm -hmm. uh, top down, where the skates were made. But um, I did research on that, and I'm like, okay, so if I could start with this flat design, I can draw it in perspective and make it look convincing. Because I remember in the script you mentioned that there were brownstone apartments. I'm like, yes. Okay, what look like inside. Right. So a lot of research. It's a lot of it's research and instinct, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, the Nana and Dawn scene, um, I'm really happy about because as a intimate scene, um, I think I did really good with moving the camera around mm -hmm. in a way that makes sense because that's a major thing. Absolutely. Is, you know, it's like uh, uh it's like one of those things where if it's if it's if it's good, no one will notice it. But if it's bad, somebody will notice it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if I say, okay, so if I make sure the camera angles aren't, you know, don't change too much, if it makes sense, people will enjoy it, it'll put them at ease. Because the last thing I want to do in a calming scene is I have a bunch of cuts everywhere. Like right, like right. It was it was really nice. Now I I know that I'm a very descriptive writer, you know, and I know a lot of animators they don't like that, you know, because I, I I'm. So I actually do. Yeah. Um, because if you don't, I'm going off the rails. Um, I'm doing stuff you didn't tell me to do. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. It frustrates my parents. Uh, it'd be like, we got to tell you everything. I'm like, yes, we do. Because if you say, hey, go cook this, and I come back and it has some extra ingredient in it, then what? <laughs> right, right, exactly. So I'm, yeah. I'm that person where I need, um, I need to know where the boundaries are. And I think as a creative, I work better that way anyway. Because it's like, okay, you gave me these boundaries. Let's see how I can mix things together. What can I do? Right. And and like you were saying earlier, I'm a I'm a visual, I'm a visual writer. And so I just when I when I see it in my head, like what's happening, and sometimes if, if someone's around, they might laugh because they'll see me kind of acting it out. And yeah, and, and, that, and that's <laughs> and that's what I and that's what I write down, you know. And then of course I have to go back and clean it up so it makes sense. But that's right. what but that's what I normally write. But I know some animators feel that that's too restrictive but then some like you you know they they like it yeah it, it helps it helps me because um it helps even in the sketching stage because mm. um if you write visually and then i give you something that's not close to that you can let me know at the first stage right you know, and that saves a lot of work you know so like like said before when i sent you the sketch of the inside of a church you said it was mm -hmm. outside and i'm like oh well at least you told me at the sketch right so, <laughs> it was just a, a new sketch at that point you know it's not it's not uh it's not new line work it's not new colors it's a new sketch get that right then line work you know so it helps me I like it. right so what did you what did you like most about the process of kind of you know going back and um you know working on the complete motion comic um, did you feel like you were kind of like, you know, going back and doing something like you've already done before, or did you feel like it was a kind of a new opportunity to create? Um, it was a new opportunity, was, you know, a new opportunity to create, but it actually, uh, um, it's a little pleasure of mine that I have to always go back and see my artwork from years mm. later or years ago, because I always like seeing my progression. So since we've been working on Califia for a while, my artwork went through some stages. Right. Um, 
So going back is a pleasure for me because it's 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 like okay, I already know what I have to draw. It's mm-hmm. not like I have to recreate it from scratch. I'm just okay. Here's here's the drawing as it is. I need to make it better. So right. You know, to me, it's just like you know, you play with it, you tweak it. You know, so I right. Like I t- I tell people that when they when they ask me the difference, even though it hasn't aired yet, the difference between you know the the four part you know, um, web series and the complete motion comic. It's like the Snyder cut of Justice League on a much lower level, but still good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it, that's how I kind of liken it to. So I think that people will, um, will enjoy, you know, um, that as a new experience. And then just seeing it um, all together, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, it's just. It's, man. I- <laughs> uh, I remember when I would go back and watch them, it, it kind of cures a frustration I had watching it on YouTube. It's right. Like, uh, okay, finished one, but now I want to go into two. I don't want to see the intro again. <laughs> right. Exactly, I exactly. Skip, I got to skip the music, get to the scene, and then, you know, then it starts. Okay, now episode three is coming together, or episode two is going to go to episode three. So I like I like having it all together. It's, you know, I just yeah. sit back and watch. Good yeah, a- absolutely. And it's a whole lot more, um, you know, cohesive. Just so you guys know, um, the, um, the four episodes are no longer available on YouTube, um, except for the first episode, the original episode, and we call that a five minute preview, um, you know, now. So definitely, you know, check out the, the full, you know, episode at either ColifiaComics.com or Califia Universe. So Sean, what's, what, what do you want to do ultimately with your career? My end goal, which actually Califia kind of touches on a little bit. Um, so I told we talked before, um, a storyboard artist is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. But my end goal has always been um, to be an art director. Like that's like, mm. you know, when I get a lot of experience in the industry, that's where I want to end up. Because right. um, my my inspiration for that was that uh, Disney's Atlantis, right? Um, because I think Mike Mignola he had did a lot of um, artwork for that, and I don't know if you will, I, don't, I don't remember he had an art director credit. You know what? No, I'm sorry. Um, it wasn't that. It, it is one of my favorite movies. Um, but Atlantis is good. Art. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Um, my main inspiration, I'm sorry, was actually Lilo and Stitch. Uh, Chris mm. Sanders was another inspiration of mine. Um, he was the art director for Lilo and Stitch. And to see your style of art throughout a whole feature like that, mm-hmm. I, that was what I wanted to do. I wanted to, I want to be able to have an influence on every little, like, if you see even just the drawing of, of a car. Oh, mm-hmm. so that's his stuff. Okay. You know, because even Chris Sanders, he had a lot of rules about you know, Stitch, you know sharp corners. Right. Uh, even like the vehicles had to have a lot of curves. You know, if it had sharp corners, it's like something evil. But even like Stitch, he didn't have any, it was like all curves and all soft. Right. Yeah. Even his ears. That's interesting that you said that. I just thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Sanders is man. I, I love his artwork. I love what he did with Lilo and Stitch. Mm-hmm. And then I also, with Lilo and Stitch, that's like the ultimate dream. Because not only was it one movie, it was a sequel. Mm-hmm. It, had it was a TV series, which blew yeah. my mind. I loved yeah. it when it was TV. Um, so it was like, you know, to 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 have an, inf- an influence like that on something that just, you know, just, just blasts off like that is amazing. Right. So Califia kind of let me, you know, see how I would do. Because yes. In the art director role, you got to think about a lot of things. You got to think mm-hmm. about the environments, uh, vehicles, uh, maybe even video editing, depending on what you're doing. So it got me, I, I want to say prepared, but it kind of got my mind like, okay, these are all the plates you have to carry. If this right. Is what you want. That's like, right. Okay, it's, I, I think I can do that. <laughs> yeah, um, Frazetta was kind of that same way, um, you know, also, you know, taking yeah. his um, o- original art from, you know, book covers uh, to comic books to, you know, to animation. 
and you can and yeah and you can see that style all the way through or you have some people like um like jack kirby who you know that our directors they take that they take that style and still use it throughout throughout their um their work but yeah but that's that's good. That's a that's a good goal, Sean, and and one that I am sure that uh, that you will uh, you will achieve. I mean, like you said, you've had a good taste of what that's kind of like on this project. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and it's fun. I um, I've always been one. Even in school, I've always been one um, like the jack of trades type. Like, mm -hmm. I used to say, I don't care what class I'm in. I'm in, if I can find a passion in it. Oh, then that's it. I'm, I'm gonna do it. Um, mm -hmm. I had some video editing classes. I'm like, okay, if I could find what I like about this, then that's it. I'm about to be. Don't let me become comfortable in this. I'm gonna be a great video editor for it. Right. And I had to do 3D work. Um, oh, so we had to do 2D and 3D in school. So, um, so I remember when we had to do 3D work. A lot of people would come to me like, Sean, can you help me with this? I was like, all right. Well, why I have I never seen any of your 3D work? Oh, man, because I haven't done it in years. Okay. Uh, well, you have to send time. me something. I I just uh, found a, a head sculpt I did years ago in a 3D program. And <laughs> you'll probably be mad at me because I looked at it and I was like, wow, this is really good. <laughs> 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 but I stopped because the programs were super expensive. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. ridiculous. Like Autodesk is like a thousand dollars a month. And I'm like, why? But, right. Now, you, well, you, wait a minute. You know, my brain is uh, cranking for those uh, character uh, profiles that we talked about yesterday. We'll, we'll tell you all about that a little bit more later. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> yeah I had, like so so it's funny because when um so Ali I think Alejandro did the three D sculpts, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, Alejandro, right. yes, he did the three D sculptures. Right. Yeah. So when you were sending me pictures, I was like, Man, I used to do this type not oh, as good because I man, shout out to him because he and I even looked up his website because I gotta know it. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I looked up his website, you know, and I'm like, oh, okay. You, right. you Yes, Alejandro. I also met through your uncle Robert. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So that's kind of that's kind of funny. Yeah. That's uh that's yeah. my that's my boy. So that's my my hookup guy. So he's always looking out. Yeah. So um, Sean, where can everybody find you and look at more of your artwork and find out more about you? So uh, Instagram is S J Hawk. Um, Facebook is just Sean J Hawkins or my business page uh, Sean J H. Um, let's see what else. I just got my website back up today. Mm. <laughs> so www.seanjh.com. Um, I'm still, I'm going to redesign it. It's not the way it looks right now, but you can, you can at least see, um, it's a good time capsule of what I was doing before Khalifa. Mm -hmm. So uh, how I was with before, but now it's time to take some stuff out. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that's about it i am on twitter um sean j hawkins art on twitter um i lurk a lot i don't really post a lot on twitter but i mean anybody wants to say hi say hi all right and you guys please continue to follow share and like at califia comics across all social media platforms and then check out the new www.califiauniverse.com. You can check out, we got fashion over there. Um, and most more importantly, that's where you can find the uh, complete motion comic. It's $1.99, you guys. Check it out, support. Um, you'll be glad that you did. And um, we just continue to thank you guys for all of your support. Appreciate you. Sean Hawkins, appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you for um, showing up today and having a chance to talk to you. This has been, I wanted us to get everything done and then we could talk about everything, you know? So, yeah. so we've had that opportunity now and man, it's just been a pleasure. And I'm just looking forward to, you know, us doing more stuff together, man. It's been great. Yeah. It's a great experience. All right. Thanks a lot, Sean. Thank you too.